in Wichita tonight. Big 12 and the American collide. The Baylor Bears, the Shockers of Wichita State. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow. This is an interesting non-conference matchup, Dan. You've got Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears. They are young, but they are talented. And the same can be said about Wichita State. Greg Marshall and his Shockers. What type of game are we looking for tempo-wise? Oh, it should be a pretty good game. Two upper echelon teams across the country over the last 10 years or so. A little bit of inexperience on both teams. I look for this game to be one on the glass. Shockers have the first possession. They are starting a junior, Ricky Torres, at the point guard spot, along with Dexter Dennis, a freshman. This is Dennis. Torres has had a cold shooting start to his season. Dennis's shot. May have been altered a bit, and the rebound goes to King McClure and Baylor. Baylor just beat South Dakota by six at home. Wichita State wiped out Rice by 29 here at the Roundhouse. McClure, a three. Controlled tempo. Both coaches preach that today in shoot around. They'd like to run, but they'd like to play defense first. McDuffie misses a long three. Marcus McDuffie a miss and an offensive rebound by the Shockers. That was Samaje Haynes Jones, smallest man on the floor. One of the problems when you play zone is the ability to rebound. That popped its ugly head early in the game there for Baylor, not blocking out out of the zone. One question mark for Wichita State. Where do they get points? McDuffie's been their leading scorer, averaging over 20 a game. Some of the guys to look for. Give me a lowdown on Makai Mason, the transfer from Yale for Baylor. He has been a heck of an addition. Had 30 points against Baylor in the NCAA tournament a couple seasons back. They kind of knew what they got when he decided to transfer for a post-grad year after the Ivy League does not allow fifth-year seniors. But he has missed the first four games of the season. Since then, he's been very solid for Scott Drew at that point guard position. You saw Greg Marshall, Wichita State, both coaches today upbeat, but preaching patience with young teams, new rosters, transfers. Marshall in his 12th year, nine consecutive 25-win seasons, and a scoreless start for Baylor and Wichita States. Oh, Baylor in a little three-quarter court pressure, not necessarily to create turnovers, but more so to take some more time off the clock and make Wichita State be a little bit tentative getting into the half-court offense. Great jump stop and finish. That is Dexter Dennis. That's one of the exciting freshmen for the Shockers. He's a freshman, but his body does not look like your typical 18-year-old freshman. Extremely explosive athlete. You can see there his strength on the finish as well. Mario Kegler with the ball, the Mississippi State transfer for Baylor, driving and drawing contact, offensive foul. Marshall talked about that in shoot around today is try to speed these guys up get them out of their comfort zone and then make a wall around the paint that time Akaniche gets there in time gets his feet set takes the charge and some full court pressure now from Baylor I like the decision by Greg Marshall to play two point guards right off the bat with Samaje Haynes Jones and Ricky Torres. Torres, zero turnovers for the first six games of the season. That bounce pass is kicked out of bounds. Wichita State will hold the ball. There's a look at Torres. One of the incredible stories in the country. He was a high school dropout as a sophomore. Somehow got his GED, played AAU ball, found himself in junior college, and here he is starting for Wichita State as a junior. Coach Greg Marshall had a lot of great things to say about his maturity in the way that he is really going to help this ball club as the season goes on. Missed the three there, but he's got the ability to knock it down from the perimeter. Shockers will hold the possession. Samaje Jones, that one turned away by Tristan Clark, the big sophomore out of San Antonio. Some really talented young players for Baylor as well. And that's a turnover. McDuffie couldn't hold it. And Baylor gets the basketball back. It's one of the things that Wichita State is going to, with their inexperience in their youth, get used to playing through the physical style that Baylor is used to in the Big 12. Baylor 
although they're young and have new faces, they are a typical Big 12 team. A lot of length, a lot of size, and bulk. McDuffie. This is where Wichita State would like to run, and this is where Baylor gets hurt. Off a miss bucket, and Dennis finishes. Good throw ahead pass by Torres. Dennis attacking the glass, finish on the opposite side of the rim. Good help defense. McDuffie. Torres. Good rotation. Samaje Jones. And the rebound to Makai Mason. You're not going to get a lot of open looks against Baylor. If you do, you've got to be able to knock them down. It's over and back. It wasn't tipped. Baylor is without a bucket and turns it over here. And McClure comes out. Matthew Meyer is in, another freshman for Baylor. Meyer's an interesting player for Scott Drew's ball club. 6'8 wing, very talented, can score in bunches. Almost one of those guys that the coach might put him in and just see, hey, is he going to be able to knock down his first shot or two and see if he can't get hot? Devontae Bandu is also in for the Bears. Torres. Echenique on a good look from Torres. His shot hit the bottom of the backboard, and it's a travel. And a timeout underway in the roundhouse in Wichita. And so far, it's been all shockers. For those of you watching on CBSSports.com, our streaming coverage will conclude after the commercial break, but we'll continue on CBS Sports Network. A 4-0 lead over Baylor. AT&T fast analysis. Wichita State's lost a lot of people, but Marcus McDuffie is still here. Back as a senior after a little bit of a disappointing junior season due to foot injuries, but he is back in a big way, averaging over 20 a game, shooting it at nearly 50% from beyond the arc, but it's going to be difficult to find good looks because Baylor, one of the best in the country at defending that three-point line, do a great job in the matchup zone, stunting, taking away easy rotations, and then contesting shots and finishing it on the glass. McDuffie, of course, last year had that stress fracture. He missed 11 games, never really was himself. He has had three really good games, including 32 against Providence for a career high. Out of the timeout, full court pressure by the Shockers. Devontae Bandu handling the ball right now for the Bears. Off the screen, Matthew Meyer backing in. He's a shooter. Bandu fighting for position is Clark in the low blocks. Comes out to screen for Meyer. Nice dish, Clark. And did he shuffle his feet? He did. He did. Good call there by the official. Fifth turnover now on the night for Baylor. In a couple of their big losses, excuse me, in their two losses this season as we get another look at Clark shuffling those feet. They have been very turnover prone. 18 turnovers in one, 19 in the other. They've got to take care of the ball. Now you just diagrammed their zone defense, and they're really good at that. And Scott Drew told us today in shoot around, live ball turnovers are really tough on them because they play man after a turnover or a missed shot. They got to hit shots and they can't turn it over to get into that zone. Absolutely right. If, if it's a turnover where the ball goes over bounds or the official blows a the whistle, they're able to get back in their zone. But Samaje Haynes Jones knocking it down from beyond the arc. Haynes Jones with a three. 7 nothing start for Wichita State. Meyer, along with Vital on that left side. This is Bandu. Baylor 0 for 3 with the five turnovers. Shot clock at 6. Mason trying to create. Clark a 3. Missed it. And with a rebound by the freshman Eric Stevenson out of Lacey, Washington. Who they feel will be a difference maker. Oh, what a move! That's what Baylor doesn't want to see happen. This crowd get into it. Not the start that they wanted. Haynes Jones with a crossover and a three. And Bedlam 
in Wichita. We asked Greg Marshall, where will the points come from? And tonight already, they've come from Samaj Haynes Jones. Does a great job using his quickness, his creativity with the bounce to create space and just rises up over the top of Makai Mason. Haynes Jones struggling this year at only a shade over 30% from the three point line, but that's a great sign for the Shockers. The consensus is the Shockers will be a better three point shooting team than they've shown so far, and they've shown that tonight. Now Baylor will try to get on the board. Almost a six minute drought to start this game. Into the corner, a baseline drive by Bandu. Vital, cut off, lost the ball, and the freshman took it away. Stevenson with a steal. Wichita State making every pass, every cut difficult for Baylor on the offensive end. Haynes Jones whips it to McDuffie, driving, kicking. And Janike up. Oh, McDuffie falling on his back. 12 0 start. Bandu count it, and he'll get a free throw. Stevenson coming over from the help side. Getting his hand on it, keeping it from going out of bounds, and then Marcus McDuffie, the extra effort on the offensive glass, getting the offensive rebound and the putback. One official said count it, the other said don't count it. They conferred and they don't count it. I agree with that. That looked like an extra bit of a continuation. Wichita State got a little lucky there. Stevenson overhelped, creating a long closeout, putting him out of position, fouling. The ref a good call and switching it back to no continuation. The foul inside on Wichita State. You see Morris Udeze is just into the ball game. Udeze, one of the many freshmen that's getting a lot of time for the Shockers. That's one of the things I, I think you can firmly say about both these teams. They'll be a lot better here in a couple months when all these freshmen and transfers get some time, get into the system figure out where they're supposed to be and good hustle and put, put back there by Mark Vidal, the sophomore out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, to your point, I completely agree. You look at Baylor in particular, Makai Mason missed the first three games of the season, and he's literally sat out the last two at Yale with injuries, and then Mario Kegler had to sit out the first six of this season after transferring. Those are two vital pieces for Scott Drew's ball club. McDuffie a three, contested, and he missed it. And Vital with the rebound and a foul, and I think Udeze picked up his second in about 15 seconds of clock. But you talk about playing tough, which is one of the calling cards of this Shocker program under Greg Marshall. You can be tough on the glass, you can be tough jamming cutters, fighting into screens, out of screens, but you gotta be smart with it. You can't just run after an offensive rebound, you have no chance of getting. Baylor having trouble getting the ball in. You can see Scott Drew asking his, his team to give a, a little bit of help to the inbounder. 16 years and just an incredible run after inheriting a real mess at Baylor long ago. And it's amazing how far those days seem now. After seven NCAA tournaments, two Elite Eights, they won the NIT, 301 wins for that man. Of course, his brother Bryce at Vanderbilt, Dad Homer, I'm sure, is watching right now. Comes from one of the great basketball families in all of college. As you mentioned, his dad and brother, two big-time coaches, just as Scott Drew is. And a lot of respect between these two guys as well. They played last year down in Waco. Those were different teams, right? I mean, especially Wichita State, who was a four-seed in the NCAA tournament, went 25-8 and eight last year, but lost Landry Shamit in the first round to the... 76ers, Shaq Morris, Connor Frankamp, Daryl Willis among the names. 12-2 start for Wichita State. Seven minutes in. A chilly night here in central Kansas. Bandu still in there right now. Tristan Clark, Kegler off a cut. This is Vidal. Rising is Kegler. 
A line drive three is no good. Haynes Jones with the rebound. Wichita kid, East High School. Oh, great look. And Midgard is fouled from behind, and he'll get a couple free throws. Nice use of the drag screen and transition there by Haynes Jones. And Midgard just making himself available. Help side goes to contain the dribble penetration. Get yourself to an open area where your point guard can deliver it to you. Midgard did just that. Good hands on the catch. Just got to finish it, but he's at least got a chance for two at the line. Asbjorn Midgard out of Denmark, a sophomore. Hits the first. Our top screw will be up bright and early tomorrow morning. It's an NFL Sunday and an 8 Eastern that gets you ready for a jam-packed day in the National Football League. That other pregame show right here on CBS Sports Network. Rich Waltz, Dan Dickow in Wichita where the Shockers are off to a quick start. Vital down with the rebound. His third already in the game. King McClure is back in. Let's see if Baylor can get him going right now. He's averaging 14 a game. Kegler cut off, rises, and misses short. And the rebound to Eric Stevenson. Stevenson had 21 points against Rice, including four threes. Haynes Jones had hit a couple threes. The rebound there to Rod Brown, who's in. Stevenson kicks. Haynes Jones. Another offensive rebound. Baylor's just getting killed right now on the defensive glass. Wichita State's been very active getting on the glass. Second chance opportunities, which will end up paying off there. Stevenson, little floater. Not sure if he was trying to go in that little corner between the rim and the backboard. Either way, it works. Second chance opportunity right there for the Shockers. Well, it's a 13-point lead right now. Baylor has just two points in the first eight and a half minutes of this game. Mason cut off, kicks to the wing. That's Kegler in traffic, got it back, and missed it. Look at the effort by Kegler, missed again. Haynes Jones, bumps before the shot. Samaje Haynes Jones getting it going early. Two quick threes. Shockers up big early. Fifteen two over Baylor early. George H. W. Bush, the 41st president of the United States, passed away at the age of 94, and he is really connected to sports. Of course, he played for two College World Series teams with Yale. First president to throw a ceremonial first pitch from a major league game from a pitcher's mound. Loved his Houston teams. And uh, we pay our respects to President Bush and send our sympathies to his family. Dan Dickow, you had a chance to cross paths with the 41st president. I did. It was towards the tail end of my NBA career. I was playing for the Portland Trailblazers, and we played in Houston. And coming out at halftime, about to start the second half, going through layup lines, I realized President Bush was sitting over there in the front row of the sidelines. And I got out of the layup line. I went over and introduced myself. And I just said, President Bush, I want to thank you for serving our country. And he was very gracious with the minute or two conversation that we had. And he thanked me for coming over and saying hello. And he wished me the luck, best of luck the rest of the game and the rest of my career. You know, it's one of those times that you realize it's a president but they are a person as well, and he was a special person. You could just tell in his spirit. And a huge sports fan. Oftentimes going in for baseball into Houston, you would see him behind home plate sitting next to Nolan Ryan watching his beloved Astros. Here, Wichita State is off to a quick start, and Baylor just can't do anything right. They're 1 of 11 from the field. Shot clock down. Dennis's three won't go. And a rebound to Makai Mason and the Bears. How does Baylor get their offense going here, Dan? Oh, I think a big part of it is going to be you've got to get stops. You've got to keep Wichita State off the glass, be able to try to get out and transition and get an easy bucket. Right now, everything they've had has been trying to score over the top. One of 11 from the field, not to mention the six turnovers. Nothing has come easy for Baylor here in the first nine and a half minutes. Baylor's averaging 75 points a game. They've played just seven games so far this year. Kegler from the corner, and he misses from three. 
That's one of 12 from the field and 0 of 5 from distance. Stevenson down the court. Kick back to Dennis. Out for McDuffie. Boy, that's nice. Oh, the ball movement. Extra pass, move it, swing it. Stevenson passed up a good look. McDuffie with a great one up top. The senior came to play. Look at this. It's 18 to 2, Wichita State. And a full house here in Wichita is delighted. Mason launches and he misses. Look at Baylor though, there's no crispness to their offense right now. Lots of dribbling, not much player movement. Little high low, Echenique, and he draws a foul from Flo Thamba. You move the ball on the offensive end, you're gonna get good looks. Echenique maybe passed up a good one. Dennis, drive, kick, McDuffie from straight away. Jamie Echenique, the junior out of Barranquilla, Colombia, Trinity Valley Community College. Now, in his native land, it's Jaime, but when he got to junior college, <laughs> everyone called him Jamie, and he wants to be called Jamie now. He said, Jamie, is that's where I'm going with right now. So Echenique, the junior, misses a, a free throw. He's a 6'11", 260-pounder. 9.6 rebounds a game. Eighteen to two. Let's see if Baylor can get something going. Bandu is back in in the backcourt along with Mason. Big man Tristan Clark and it's stripped from behind. Stolen away by Jamarius Burton. Trailing Stevenson and flying down the court is Mark Vital with a block. That's a great example by Vital of getting back on defense. You make a mistake, make up for it on the other end, not quitting on the play. Stevenson, got to take a look back as you're running down the floor. Hear those footsteps if you don't see them. Stevenson off a screen and missed just about everything. The future pretty bright for that young pseudo. Stevenson, a, a freshman. He's had a nice start to the freshman season here. At home, he seems to shoot it much better. Almost 70% from the field here at home. 21 points in their last win as he led them in scoring. Coach Marshall had some really good things to say about him at shoot-around. He's, he's a play, guy that plays with a chip on his shoulder. He's aggressive. His best basketball is ahead of him. He's going to work at it, and he's going to become a good player for this program. So Maja Haynes-Jones and Ricky Torres back into the game for Wichita State in the backcourt. Mason off a screen. Clark with the finish. Following on the roll, he just rolled right down the lane and finished with two hands. Mason engaged him on the pick-and-roll defense, allowing Clark the ability to clean up the miss. Great catch, but Echenique can't slam it home on the pass from Torres. They were looking for any drip of momentum they can grab. Off the side of the backboard for Bandu. Haynes Jones. McDuffie is offensive. No bucket. This crowd did not like that, but we've got the ability to get another look. McClure clearly gets outside the restricted area. Good call by the official. Greg Marshall <laughs> is in midseason form. <laughs> oh, he, you know what? He loves this ball club. He understands that, you know, they have some ex inexperience. They've got some growing to do. But he says, come end of this season, come next season, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with again. Mason long distance. Boy, Baylor right now from distance. 0 of 7. They're 2 of 17 from the floor. McDuffie's wide open and missed the three. And a chance to run, a rare chance to run for the Bears. McClure down the lane. And he misses it. It's a Nike. Because Baylor hasn't been able to score, they haven't been able to set up in their zone defense. Look at that hustle. Dexter Dennis. McDuffie driving. 
off the glass. Sometimes you dodge a bullet. Haynes Jones with a wild shot. Their activeness on the offensive glass gets him another second chance opportunity. Mason on a pick and roll and his pass is out of bounds. And that is turnover number eight for Baylor. Right now, Wichita State is hammering Baylor. The Bears need a few more of those. Down 20 to 4, 7 10 left in the first. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. That's the late Dave Stallworth, who was a two-time All-American here at Wichita State, went on to the NBA, most notably with the Knicks, and that's the very first statue of a Shocker player outside Ch Charles Koch Arena. Stallworth up there with guys like Antoine Carr, Cleo Littleton. They have some great names here. The X-Man was here. Xavier McDaniel, Cliff Levingston played here. But that was this morning that they unveiled and, and dedicated that statue. And they have a full house here. This has been such a great college basketball town. And a lot of the credit goes uh, to that man, Craig Marshall. A really nice crowd here on a cold and wet and uh, chilly night outside. And look at the score, 20 to 4, Wichita State on top. Of course, the great Eddie Fogler was here long ago. Got it going. Torres kicks McDuffie. Calling for it is Isaiah Poor Bear Chandler, and he sweeps in with a hook. Great footwork, a little shimmy to the baseline, coming back to the middle. Now hook over the left shoulder. Good footwork, good touch. Good job sealing, and then sell the drop step to the baseline. Clark doesn't want to pick up another foul. Poor Bear Chandler with a nice finish to the middle. He's the third big that Wichita State has played already in this first half. Echenique, of course, started. We saw Midgard. Baylor just having a nightmare of a first half right now. Two of 18, 0 of 7 from beyond the arc. Jared Butler is in now, the freshman out of Louisiana, just to try to get something going, spins. Oh, wow. Speaking of getting something going. He's a high-level athlete, originally committed to Alabama. Was able to get out of that commitment and get to Baylor. Also a big-time high school football player in Louisiana as a quarterback. Ricky Torres misses the three. And here's a look at Butler. The ability to put the ball on the deck and create something out of nothing. Perfect example there by Butler. Late substitution, Mark Vidal comes in. And Tristan Clark will sit down. The numbers are just shocking right now. Three of 19 from the field, 0 of seven from three. It's not just that, it's the turnover. Eight turnovers already. You're going to have stretches where you don't shoot it well, but if you have stretches you don't shoot it well and you turn it over and you give up eight offensive rebounds. That's not a good recipe for success. Vital down low. 15 foul on Baylor. Not a lot of fouls here. McDuffie on the inbound, missed the baseline jumper. Boy, poor Bear Chandler kick out, and Haynes Jones, another three. Well, the difference on the three that he's made versus the two that he's missed is his feet are set and he's on good balance. But poor Bear Chandler working hard on the offensive glass, give him another chance. McClure wobbled. Good defense there by Dexter Dennis, the freshman. Haynes Jones having a terrific first half. Only with nine points. He's got a career high seven rebounds. And a foul, a reach on the drive by Dennis. Second chance points 
due to the extra effort. Poor Bear Chandler digs it out, finds an open spotted up Haynes Jones from beyond the arc. Chalk up another three for that young man. Started the night off extremely well. Matthew Meyer is in. Baylor's been trying to find the right combination on a cold night inside for the Bears shooting the basketball. Three of 20 right now. James Jones, as Greg Marshall told us, is more of a shooting guard, not necessarily a point guard. Dennis around the horn, off the glass, poor Bear Chandler Stevenson. <laughs> Everything is going Wichita State's way. Another second chance opportunity lead to a made three. Bandu off balance three. Haynes Jones in transition, driving. Kicking, Stevenson. Collapse the D in transition. Kick it to an open shooter. Another knockdown three. Wichita State is clicking on all cylinders. Thirty-one six. Wichita State. They have gotten it done in all kinds of ways. Offensive rebounds, kicking out to open shooters in the three-point line. That time in transition, if you're a shooter, get yourself down the floor and get in the vision of your point guard collapsing the defense. Stevenson doing that, Haynes Jones finding him. Coach Marshall has to really enjoy what he's seeing this evening. Baylor gets it in, full court pressure by the Shockers. Look, if you're Baylor, you're just trying to stop the momentum, get a little bit of momentum your way, and that maybe does it with a three that rolls in from Jared Butler, who scored five off the bench. He's been the lone bright spot for Baylor, but even that was a questionable shot. A stare down three from about 25 feet. Haynes Jones. Oh, my! You go under the pick and roll when somebody has got it going and feeling. You better just get back on defense, because you're giving up three. He's got a dozen. He's four of seven from three. And a turnover. The ninth already for Baylor. I don't think anybody expected this. Well, I know we didn't. I mean, we were at both shoot arounds, both teams extremely well prepared. They both had energetic shoot arounds. We were looking at this to be a good ball game. And just because neither of these teams are picked near the top of their conferences doesn't mean they're talented. Most of their talent is really young or brand new in, in terms of either grad transfers or junior college transfers. Uh, you're right. Both teams are still learning each other, the chemistry, how to play with each other on the offensive and defensive end of the floor. Oh, stop it. Samaje Haynes-Jones. Looking a little more like Marcus Jones. Of the Globetrotters. 15. Meyer. Air ball on a three. Haynes Jones with the rebound. He was thinking from the logo. <laughs> you beat me to it, Rich. He was sizing it up. He's well past the heat check. Stevenson kept his feet. Strokes a three. My goodness. The Shockers are incredible tonight. The floodgates have opened. When one guy gets hot, they all get hot. Haynes Jones has started it off, and he's kept it going. Five threes on the evening. You better go over the top of that screen and get a hand up, because Haynes Jones is feeling it here in Wichita. My why is there's nothing like winning games in front of this crowd. You gotta give them something to get excited about tonight. They're gonna be in your pocket. You've never, those of you who are new, you've never experienced anything like this. Go have fun, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three, family. Let's get it. Now that was moments before the game, and boy have they had fun and enjoyed it. <laughs> Look at that, that three-point shooting, and you see Greg Marshall. Man, he's sweating. He's getting after it himself. Seven straight NCAA tournament appearances. 
nine straight 25 win seasons. Of course, they were a, a Final Four team in 2013. They were a four seed in the NCAA tournament last year. And they are absolutely blowing the doors off of a Big 12 team, the Baylor Bears. Tristan Clark over Michinike. Michinike has the rebound. Wichita State with the ball and the lead. And yeah, they, the crowd here has just been electric tonight. Great entry and finish with two hands. Michinike. Clark went for the steal. Give the angle up to Akaniche for the easy catch and dunk. Line drive three rattles out. Clark the rebound, put back, fouled before the shot. You get a chance to see it here. Nice change of the angle and entry pass there from Stevenson to Akaniche. Clark goes for the steal and slips, allowing that to get through for the easy dunk, but. Wichita State having their way right now with Baylor. Eric Stevenson with that foul. He's got two for Wichita State, a 42-9 lead. Mason drives, and the Yale transfer finishes with the right hand. It's been a tough year for him physically. With a, Remember, he had the foot issues at Yale that knocked him out essentially the last two years. A sore ankle has limited his practice time. You're right. He's been limited in practice. But what that bucket does is now it allows Baylor to get back and set up in their matchup zone. They haven't been able to do that much tonight. With only five made field goals. Stevenson from long range. And the rebound to Mario Kegler. Mason to the trailing Kegler. Baylor from the field, 5 of 26, 1 of 11 from distance. And now they're starting to get better looks. Kegler finishes at the rim. But still a long way to go here. Stevenson in traffic. Torres no look. Down to the baseline. And a shot block there by Clark as he turned away Rod Brown. Rod Brown had his mind made up on the catch. He was going to find a way to get a shot up. Take what the defense gives you. AT&T at the half is coming up. Brent Stover, Swin Cash, John Rothstein. And for good measure, a nice dose of Jameer Nelson, ladies and gentlemen. So look around college basketball. All the highlights and stats. Dan Dickow, you and Jameer Nelson met on the hardwood a few times. Had a New Year's Eve matchup in 2001. Gonzaga, we came up out with Philadelphia on top, but they got the Zags the following year in Spokane after I graduated. Heck of a college player. Yeah, he was pretty good in that in Spokane in that game. What, he was, was yeah. 38 points. Or I think he had 38 points. And the way this game's going, James Jones might be approaching those numbers himself. Now remember, Stevenson is one of the freshmen that no one's heard of. That Greg Marshall is putting into the rotation. He's got 11. Haynes Jones is doing it from distance. He's back in there. And I'd like to see Baylor try to put a little bit more emphasis on getting the ball into Tristan Clark. He got it a couple possessions ago, but it was more in the elbow area instead of on the low block. He is a guy that is top five in the country in field goal percentage. They've got to get him the ball. He commands a double team, and for the most part, he makes good decisions when he gets it. This is Torres. Haynes Jones draws a little more attention. Torres, excellent look to McDuffie. Torres has not shot the ball well, but he certainly has passed it well this year. High IQ, great passer, but McDuffie finding the open area along that baseline called the short corner against the zone. It's tough to guard guys in that spot. Foul on the drive. McDuffie's second. 44-15. If you're just joining us, Baylor five and two. Yeah, they're young, but they're talented. Wichita State has absolutely hammered them. 
The Bears are just 6 of 28 from the field, 1 of 12 from 3. And a miss on a front end there. About a second differential. Game clock, shot clock. Greg Marshall wanted a timeout. Gets the timeout. We'll return to Wichita. For the Shockers. Greg Marshall intense there. Wu Shock is the uh, mascot. He's been busy tonight, but Greg Marshall, but despite this lead, you can see him right now. It's a teaching moment for Ricky Torres. He wanted a timeout. He wanted to set up this last possession. Despite a great first half and a huge lead. An opportunity here. Baylor extends their zone. Dennis, corner, Stevenson. Rattles out, loose. Dennis put back. About the only thing that didn't go right for Wichita State, 44-15 over Baylor at the half. After the break, we'll send you back to our New York studio. Brent Stover, swing cast, John Rossi, Jameer Nelson standing by AT&T at the half. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. First half points by that man, Samaje Haynes Jones, 44 15. Wichita State on top of Baylor. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow. This is a stunning uh, first half of basketball. We thought this was going to be a very even matchup. We were wrong. <laughs> we were wrong. And I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that the energy level that Wich Wichita State is playing with is much greater than it seems that Baylor is playing with. Baylor's going to, quite frankly, have to come out and compete in this second half to make it a game. All right, AT&T fast analysis. Actually, we'll get to our first half stats first. Look at that one for 12 from distance for Baylor and nine threes for Wichita State. Well, Wichita State was active on the offensive glass, which led to some open threes. But Wichita State also got them off pick and rolls, dribble penetration, and in transition. And now we present our AT&T fast analysis and it features some aj haynes jones well, there is only one guy we could pick in that first half he was everything from the outside of the arc catch and shoot threes creating off the bounce finding and relocating off of offensive rebounds putting it up off of the pick and roll and then shaking him down staring him down shooting it from beyond the arc straight away heck of a first half for samaje haynes jones and he had a career-high nine rebounds as well. And so if you're Scott Drew, and, and this is the largest halftime deficit in 14 years, what do, what do you say to your team at halftime? You don't win a game in one possession. You don't lose a game in one possession. We got to clean up the glass. We got to take care of the ball. Let's run our offense a little bit more efficiently and chip away at it one possession at a time. Vital cutoff. Makai Mason waits for a screen. Takes the screen, back to Vidal. Shot clock at 10. Off balance shot and a rebound to Dexter Dennis. And here comes Haynes Jones. Torres hops in off the glass. Wichita State stretches the lead to 31. Kegler, he had a tough first half. He was one for nine from the field. Mason off balance with that sore foot. HNEK with the rebound. Haynes Jones. Really shifty with the dribble. Uses his quickness well, as evidenced by that first half, by keeping the defense off balance. Dennis flashes. Kicks, long one there. Isaiah Poor Bear Chandler getting the start in the second half. Misses on the three. McDuffie 
Two fouls in that first half, as the same for Udeze. But Tristan Clark got the ball in deep low post position where he does the majority of his damage. He's a guy to watch, I think, this season for Baylor. He had 27 against Ole Miss. He's averaging 14 a game, just a sophomore out of San Antonio. James Jones with the miss. And Baylor's got a rebound. And almost a yes, another turnover. That's 10 turnovers for the Bears. Their turnovers are almost catching up with the points they've scored. Caught it on a caught it faced up and attacked quickly before the double, double team was able to arrive. That's what Tristan Clark has to do. Quickly see if the doubles come and make your decision. If you're not comfortable with it, invite the double team. Get defense in rotation after you swing it out. Torres splits the D in the lane, kicks. Let it go. Hit five in the first half. The rotation. Dennis is shot blocked. Two on the shot clock. And a difficult place to inbound from. And that's a corner. Tristan Clark. Averages close to three blocks a game on the season. That one was easy for him. Catch and shoot. It's partially blocked. And a shot clock violation. Now Greg Marshall's team had sputtered a bit to start this season at three and three. Shockers lost a close one to Davidson and to Alabama. And they were stunned at home by Louisiana Tech to start the year. But much better of late. Uh, there's a three. King McClure in his 108th career game with Baylor. Been more of a blue guy the first three seasons in Waco. He averages over 14 a game now. Really grown into a leadership role over the time in his career. Torres gets the ball to the baseline. H&EK, the miss. Ripped down by Clark. Mason driving. Haynes Jones with the block. This guy, it's interesting to watch Makai Mason as Greg Marshall animated as usual on the bench. <laughs> Makai Mason played just one game last year after a red shirt year at Yale. Stress fracture on his foot. That's Mason with the three. He does not practice. He, he, they have kept him out of contact after he turned an ankle just to try to keep him healthy. And that affects not only him, but the entire team because of the ability to, to be on the same page going from practice and shoot around and then into the games, because you've got to be able to run things at a game speed and a game type feel. And quite frankly, Mason's not able to do that as much as everybody would like. Haynes Jones, yes, another three, six of them, 18. Passed one up earlier in this half. That time, no hesitation on the trigger. Fans love him here. East High School in Wichita, Hutchinson Junior College. And a national championship there a couple seasons ago. Clark and a foul. Dennis blasted right through a screen. You're hot, you get open. Let it go. Samaje Haynes-Jones stays hot here in the second half. That makes six triples. Shockers still up big. Tuesday night, women's college basketball. Number two, UConn. The Huskies taking on the Billikens of St. Louis right here on CBS Sports Network. And of course, anytime you talk Huskies, you talk about the incredible ride under Gino Ariema, 11 national titles, four in the last six seasons, 11 straight final fours. Now, I told you he blew right through the screen. Actually, the, the term for that is blowing up a screen. You can't do that. That's a point of emphasis this year. That is a flagrant one on Dexter Dennis of Wichita State. 
Well, the official came over and explained the reason why, but if you would have seen about eight or ten seconds before on that same possession, somebody, I'm not sure if it was Makai Mason or another Baylor Bear, they caught Dexter Dennis with a back screen. The referee always seems to catch the second one, and you just saw a second ago Coach Marshall explaining to Dennis, hey, I like your physicality, but you got to play within yourself and keep your cool. If you're just happening by this basketball game, Wichita State had a 33-point lead in the first half. Baylor shot one of 12 from distance. Just a nightmare first half for Scott Drew and the Bears on the road. Hostile environment. Here in Wichita, Kegler with the left hand. And a really nice touch for the sophomore, the transfer from Mississippi State. Now that's the type of move that we're expecting out of him. Played really well in his first game this season after the suspension, but struggled so far tonight. Let's see if that gets him on track. Echenique misses the three. Vital with an offside rebound, and maybe Baylor can make a run here. Well, that's not the shot that you want if you're Wichita State. Echenique is not a three-point shooter. On a ball handoff, it's not often that you pick up a, a foul, but watch this, you throw the, I don't know about I'm that. I'm not sure about that either. That's a tough foul for Vital. I mean, big, broad shoulders. I thought maybe he threw the caboose out, but he didn't. <laughs> he he kind of stood his ground. Burton tried to run through it. He got the worst of that, but I agree with you. I don't think that was a moving screen in the offense at all in the dribble handoff. McDuffie pops out for three. McClure now with the rebound. A lot more rhythm, a lot more flow with Baylor right now, but they're so far behind. McClure, Mason, Clark, Vital, and Kegler on the floor right now for the Bears. Mason, the transfer from Yale. Pick and the roll. Clark, drop step. Oh, wow, what a difficult shot. With the left hand, this big guy's got skills. He's got great balance and footwork, and his ability to finish with either hand makes him able to spin away from a potential double team and go on the baseline and finish. When you look at the scoreboard, it's lopsided, but this is an 11-3 run for Baylor. Haynes Jones misses a three, and you get a sense that the, the Bears all of a sudden have a little more confidence offensively. Mason and Clark worked that two-man game again and trying to split the screen. Mason bumped off the ball. Shocker's on the move. McDuffie with the slam and the foul. Well, I like the effort by Mason, but if you're in that position, just step out of the way. No need to give him the opportunity at the three-point play. Tries to split the screen and resulting in the turnover. Burton, the great throw-ahead pass. And then McDuffie finishing with the flush over the top, the chance at the three-point play. I mean, I was a little guy when I played. I, there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I would get out of the way because I wouldn't want to get dunked on. 51-26, Marcus McDuffie with 10 points. Shockers led in scoring by Samaje Haynes-Jones, who has 18. Lead back to 26. Just when you thought Baylor was about to maybe make a run, they were looking a little better on the offensive end as far as flow and continuity, and turnover, and the three-point play in transition. Clark to Butler down the lane. Coughed it up, got it back. Clark, vital, scoring. And Baylor has a bucket. Avoids the turnover. McDuffie can score from all over, and he puffs it up. And Baylor with another turnover. McClure steps through and scores. And Greg Marshall looking up at the scoreboard. He sees 13 minutes and 10 seconds left. He sees a 22-point lead. But all the momentum seems to have slipped away. Burton's jumper won't go. And another rebound for Clark. They're getting away from themselves on the offensive end. Too much dribbling. The ball's sticking. 
Vidal wants it. Clark rotates it. Three from McClure. Got it. And Baylor, who was dead in the water, all of a sudden showing signs of life. The Bears have cut it to 19. Baylor showing some signs of life. Mark Vidal taking it into the rim. Has the momentum. Wichita State is still comfortably on top. And Wednesday night, we've got a great doubleheader. Oklahoma State and Tulsa at 8 Eastern. And then SEC standout Daniel Gafford and Arkansas taking on Colorado State. That is at 10. Cameron McGriff and the Cowboys. McGriff off to a, a nice start himself. 17 points a game, shooting 46% from the field. Here tonight, what an odd game this has been. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow. Wichita State, and this we felt was a real even matchup. Greg Marshall said it was. Scott Drew said it was. Wichita State had a 33-point lead in the first half. Well, they did it by forcing turnovers by Baylor, dominating the offensive glass, and then hitting nine threes in that first half. Baylor much more settled on the offensive end here to start the second. Ball loose, and guess who's got it? Baylor's got it. Look, there's 12 and a half minutes left. You, we saw Wichita State go up by 33 in the blink of an eye, it felt like. So Baylor certainly has enough time if they keep chipping away. And this is part of where we've talked about both teams have inexperience, but Wichita State has a lot of backcourt perimeter players that are young freshmen. Haynes Jones, obviously a senior, but the rest of their backcourt is primarily freshmen. Haven't been in this situation before. Vidal kicks it. Thamba into the corner. Good ball fake. And a jumper by Devante Bandu. Bandu, his first bucket of the game. And Bandu, 41% three-point shooter. A little lift fake. Brings Stevenson out of a stance after the closeout. Nice wonderful pull-up. McDuffie's entry and a reach and a foul. Trying to get it in to Morris Udeze. The under-12 timeout. Baylor, a long way to go, but you know what? They're halfway there. AT&T game summary. Now, again, it looks lopsided, but this was a 33-point lead for Wichita State. Dan Dickow, how has Baylor gotten back in this? Well, they've done a great job defensively in making Wichita State take tough shots and then shoring up the glass here in the second half. They couldn't shoot it much worse than they shot it in the first half. First half shot it at about 21%, so they you knew they were going to be better offensively, but they've really shored things up on the defensive end to start the second half. I know what you're thinking at home. How can you be back in it when you're down 17? They were down 33, and that was midway through the first half. Driving left-hand layup missed there by Haynes Jones. And Wichita State will get it. Haynes Jones didn't miss much in the first half. He's got 18, and he's got a double-double. And not what you would think. It's not points and assists. He's got 18 points and 10 rebounds. He only had nine rebounds on the season coming into tonight. Young man Stevenson had a really nice first half, and he floats that one in off the glass. Well, that's what happens when you hit a couple threes in the first half. Teams are going to close out hard at you. Use that to your advantage, a little lift fake. And then that time, nice attack to a finish. Young man from Timberline, Washington. Eric Stevenson's got 13 points. Now Baylor looking for an answer. Vital in traffic. Triple teams. Got the ball to flow Thamba, and he was stripped with nine seconds on the shot clock. Thamba, one of the many freshmen that Scott Drew has in the rotation. Freshman and a, a sophomore, a couple of sophomores, and Kegler, Vital, and add a, a third in Clark in that rotation. You see that run, 20 to eight is the run, but still a ways to go. Butler, a freshman to inbound it. 
Van Du, the junior college transfer. He was a teammate at Hutchinson of Samaje Haynes Jones. So a couple of those guys meet here. And this is Haynes Jones against his old teammate, Van Du, got the ball back and misses the three. Ball bounced out of bounds, and it stays with Wichita State. I asked Scott Drew if he thought playing here tonight would replicate a Big 12 road experience, and he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> with the, the noise of this place, and the crowd, that's, uh, this is a good place to come non-conference for a little taste for all the newcomers is what they're going to expect on the road in the Big 12. This is my first experience here in Wichita. I've been impressed with this crowd. I'm lucky enough to call a lot of Gonzaga games at the Kennel in Spokane, which is one of the best atmospheres, but this is pretty darn good here in Wichita. Stevenson walks. That's a turnover. Late in the clock, a turnover. And Baylor down 19. We'll get it back. We talked about Hutchinson Community College. Samaje Haynes Jones and Devontae Bandu were teammates. And that team won the national championship. Hutchinson Community College. They put so many players in so many big programs across the NCAA every year. Butler lost the ball. Torres steals it, gets it to McDuffie, up to Stevenson. Stevenson with surprising athletic ability at the state tournament last year in the state of Washington at the 3A level. He dumped on a 7-4 opponent. Whoa, blocked there. That was Echenique. Stevenson. And do got a hand on it. A lot of times you can create offense through defense. That time Wichita State doing just that. Stevenson getting out ahead, finishing it with the two-hand flush. The fact that he's here and playing all the way from rural Washington really shows that Wichita State nationally has cachet and can recruit all over the place. Well, I think that's part of it, but I think Greg Marshall and his staff have an idea of the type of guys that they like. And Eric Stevenson fits that mold extremely well as Kegler has the nice finish wanting the chance to go to the free throw line. But they want guys, Marshall does, with a chip on their shoulder. Guys that play hard are going to buy into being coached and improve over their time here in Wichita. Great cut by McDuffie. Missed the layup. Here comes Baylor. Mason driving. And missed the shot. Echenique rips down the rebound. That's his seventh of the game. Greg Marshall has sweat right through his sport coat. He's now got the, the dress shirt soaks. McDuffie, long three, missed it. Tristan Clark with the rebound. Wichita State has cooled down from that first half. A 33-point lead. Clark doubled. Nice pass. Meyer, and he's fouled. McDuffie, and I believe it'll be his third personal. Good read by Meyer. Tristan Clark gets back cut. Meyer makes him, excuse me, Tristan Clark gets double teamed on the low block. Meyer reads it, back cuts, makes himself available, and then takes it strong to get himself to the free throw line. He's a player that Scott Drew and the staff really like. He's young as a freshman, a little thin, but I think he's going to grow into becoming a really good player in the Big 12. He can shoot a little bit. He can put the ball on the deck. He's just got to get used to a more physical brand, physical style of basketball. He's not shy in, in shooting it. In fact, oftentimes coaches have to, to prod freshmen to take some shots. And uh, Meyer came into this game with uh, 109 minutes played, but 57 points. And Scott Drew still coaching hard. Baylor's cut into that sizable lead, which was 33 at one point. Dexter Dennis is back in, and a block. That was Meyer on the baseline. Check that. Clark is going to go on Tristan Clark. 
his second. There aren't many empty seats left here. They've had just an incredible ride attendance-wise. They renovated this old arena back uh, probably about 15, 16 years ago. Torres on a pick, the roll, and a foul. It's a nice job by Isaiah Poor Bear Chandler to keep that ball alive. They call this the roundhouse, and it, it's perfectly round with almost a, a flat top, and the noise is deafening in here. Last year in a key American game, Cincinnati was here, and the decibel level apparently was at 120. Yeah, as, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I've been impressed with the support this Wichita State team gets from the community and the atmosphere in the arena. It holds 10,500, and my guess is there's over 10,000 at least here tonight, and it was nasty outside. Heavy winds, really a cold rain. They honored that 1964 Final Four team here at the half. Good rebounding there by Poor Bear Chandler, who comes out, sets a, a big size screen, and he had uh, a little too wide a base there. Point of emphasis, kids. Eight minutes left in this one. Still Wichita State. The most important. First look at the Shockers freshman, Eric Stevenson. And he's impressive tonight. Put together a nice game so far. He's got the ability to score at all three levels. The floater, a lift fake, relocate, knocking it down from behind the arc. And then the ability to finish over the top. That man is going to have a nice career here in Wichita. He's away from home. It, it kind of reminds me of when Tony Bennett found Joe Harris in uh, Washington. Not in a big city, not in a big program. Saw him play in AAU, liked him, convinced him to go to Virginia. And that worked out pretty well for the Cavaliers. It did. Joe Harris carving out himself a nice NBA career. I'm not ready to say that just yet about Eric Stevenson, but what I have been impressed in talking to the staff about him and as well as his AAU coach, Carl Howell, is his ability to work and not leave any stone unturned to improve. Meyer, good work down low, but he missed a couple putbacks. You got to admire the fight by Baylor. Torres in transition and a pull-up jumper, and he hits it. That's a big shot for Torres. Struggled to score early this season. A good shooter at the junior college ranks at 40% or so, 0 for 11 on the year, but he's got the ability to score. He just hasn't shown it this year. Vital with a crossover, getting to the glass and scoring. Baylor has outplayed Wichita State here in the second half, but they're still down by 18 after falling down by 33 in the first half. So encouraged for Baylor that they're playing better, but that hole was so deep. Poor Bear Chandler, what a great shot. Makai Mason in transition to Bandu, and he misses the three. And the rebound by Dexter Dennis. He draws contact. Torres pushing it in transition with the head up. Nobody stops him early enough. Just simply stop on a dime, knock it down from the elbow. Now, Greg Marshall told us he's a better shooter than he has shown. Uh, he came into this ball game shooting poorly from distance. 0 of 11 from three. He's missed a couple threes in this one. But no turnovers. And that, I mean, look, if you're going to be a point guard and you get assists and you don't turn it over, you can wait for the shooting to come. Absolutely. Seven games in still. As a rotation player who's getting his feet wet in college basketball, zero turnovers. Impressive. Six and a half minutes left. Baylor still has a somewhat ambitious non-conference schedule. They've got to go to Arizona. They've got Oregon coming their way. And Meyer 
He's got a shot at a three-point play. Matthew Meyer out of Austin, Texas, Westlake High School. Length at 6'9", and the ability to handle the ball is what excites Scott Drew the most. Right there, lost it a little bit, played through the contact, got it up on the rim. Anytime you hear that whistle, make sure you get the ball up at the rim in a shooting motion. Give it a chance to get in, at the very least, get yourself to the free throw line. Corbett Chandler coming off the court with three fouls, and here is Meyer now. Vital kick, Mason three, got it! And Baylor gets a bucket and a three and essentially a five-point play, and look at this. See the run, 7-0 now, 59-46. At one point, it was a 33-point Wichita State lead. It's down to 13. Just keep grinding away at it. Make things difficult for Wichita State. Your offense will come. Chalkers now, Echenique. Loose ball, Mason has it. Bears have a chance to get closer. Up ahead, Vital going hard, and he's fouled. It's a block. Haynes Jones is down. Vital is down. And that's the fourth personal, or, excuse me, the second personal on Haynes Jones. What do you think? Block? It lo definitely looks like a block. Haynes Jones gave him a lot of credit for trying to step in, giving a lot of weight there to Vital. Didn't look like he was quite set. It looked to me as if it was a knee into Samaje Haynes-Jones thigh. That's, that's going to be sore in the morning, that's for sure. Mark Vidal, a sophomore. In Lake Charles, Louisiana. Baylor has had, uh, had a lot of success with Louisiana players. They've got a couple good ones with Vidal. And Jared Butler. Tweedy Carter. Rico Gathers. Also, Louisiana. 59 47, five and a half minutes left. Can Baylor come all the way back from 33 down? Or is there enough time? Stevenson driving hard, rising, missed it. And Ichineke over the top. And it's his foul. And Baylor's going to get a chance to shoot some more free throws here. When you give them the ability to put, put points on the board without time running off, that bodes in Baylor's favor. They just keep sawing wood, seeing what happens. Again, two young and experienced teams. Baylor doesn't know any better than to just to keep playing. And at the same time, Wichita State, outside of McDuffie and Haynes Jones, pretty young basketball club. Vital hits the first. He has a chance to draw within 10. And having watched the first half, it's amazing to see Baylor this close. Some confusion on the floor. Both coaches substituting. Torres is back in for Wichita State. Vidal has one more free throw going. And he hits it. So Baylor is down 10 right now. Look at the run, 23-7. Torres in backcourt. Hounded by McClure. Crowd is anxious now. From absolute joy to the edge of their seats. A 33-point lead down to 10. And McDuffie loses it. Baylor has the ball. 4.54 left. They're down 10. Wichita State had all the energy on the defense end in that first half. The last few minutes, Baylor has really cranked it up. Here you see the active hands on the ball. Mason early in rotation. McDuffie just not quite able to corral that pass. 
With two and a half minutes left in the first half, it was 33. Vital crosses over. Can't finish. Meyer keeps it alive. Baylor has it. Mason's three. Short. Meyer fighting for the rebound. And a foul on Baylor on the rebound. I think Kegler's going to get the foul, which would be his fourth. It is. Seven team fouls on each side. One and one here for Jamie Echenique. A lot of times you want to say don't put them at the line, but Echenique is not a great free throw shooter. Wichita State it's themselves across the board have struggled from the free throw line as well this evening. Greg Marshall right now. It, it's not every coach's nightmare, but coaches have this nightmare. <laughs> their, their team came out and did everything right and had a 33-point lead with two and a half minutes left in the first half. And Baylor has outplayed him in the second half and slowly but surely drawn within 10. A lot of times having such a good half can be fool's gold for a young team. You kind of think things are going to be just as easy in the second half. Well, if you think about it, Baylor played about a poor a first half as they could have played today. Letting Wichita State dominate the glass, not being able to shoot it very well at all, and then turning it over 10 times in that first half. Baylor's been much better in those three areas. I think the officials right now are trying to determine if the foul was on Kegler or Meyer. Meyer's 24, Kegler's four. Well, I think they were making sure, one, who it was on, but also the new hook and hold rule. You have the ability to go back and look at the monitor, and if it is deemed a hook and hold, it's deemed a flagrant one, giving you the ball back as well. HNK front end of a one and one. He hits the free throw. This guy's come to life over the last three games. Jamie HNK. Makes one of two. Lead is 11, four and a half left. Baylor on an incredible run right now. Clark a screen. McClure missed it. Clark the tip with a left hand down the lane. And it's single digits. A nine point Wichita State lead. Dennis kicking and it's out of bounds. It was tipped. And it will stay with Wichita State. Ten points now for Tristan Clark. To go with seven rebounds. And you can't just take the air out of the ball right now. There's 406 left. Well, you've got to stay with what was successful in that first half, which Whoa. Has been done very well. Mason with the steal. Driving. Throws it up. And he's fouled and goes down hard. And he'll get free throws. Wichita State turns it over on a baseline out of bounds. It was deep in the corner, which is a difficult angle to throw it in, but you can't throw the ball in such an area where it's going to lead to a potential opportunity to lead out break for Baylor, which is what happened. Mason doing a good job making sure he draws contact, getting himself to the line where he's been near automatic this season. First free throw is up and good. Baylor knew all about Mason. They knew him from his Yale days when he hung 31 in the NCAA tournament on him. Mason hits both free throws. It's a seven point game, four minutes left. Unbelievable. A 33 point lead for Wichita State is almost gone. And Janik is stolen. Ball's loose. This is McClure, and he will score. And Baylor is closer. Five is the lead. From 33 to 5, 340 left here at Wichita. Shockers need a timeout. 
10,000 are stunned here at the Roundhouse tonight. The Bears are off the canvas and are down by five. Unbelievable. And Dick Al, explain how Baylor was so bad in the first half, down 33, and have drawn within five. Well, Baylor was very stagnant on the offensive end in the first half, turned the ball over a number of times. In the second, they've gotten back to what they do best, getting Clark on the low block, Mason from the three-point line, attacking the offensive glass, and then the drive and kick game. Shot fake when they close out too hard, put it on the deck, knock it down, a tail of two halves for both of these teams here tonight. Field goal percentage, Baylor 21% first half, over 50% here second half. And there's a ton of time. Things were so dire for Baylor in that first half, they used all but their only timeout left. They used everything but one timeout in that first half. And now Greg Marshall is about to pop right out of his dress shirt. 3.37 left here in Wichita. Got to get it in. Easier said than done right now for Wichita State. Ricky Torres is back in. Haynes Jones had 15 in that first half. He's got 18 in the game. Cut off and walked. Travel. He, he walked. It. And Wichita State turns it over. Well, credit Tristan Clark on the hedge on the pick and roll. Made Samaj Haynes Jones slightly change his angle. And then the trap comes. Switches pivot feet. Good call by the official. It's a two possession game under three and a half minutes left. I don't think we saw this coming at the start of the second half. Makai Mason with the ball. He's hit some big shots here. Myers on the floor. The freshman, McClure. This is Kegler, a three. Missed it. And Echenique has the rebound. It's been a rough go for Kegler. 3 of 12 and 0 of 4 from beyond the arc. It's not a good shot in that situation, though. Hasn't shot it well all night from the perimeter, and that was out of rhythm with what's been working for Baylor tonight in the second half. Haynes Jones, McDuffie. Missed it. A lot of contact, no whistle yet. Dennis in a pile of humanity in the lane. It's a hell ball. The arrow's going to stay with Wichita State. With two and a half minutes left. I'm sure some of you are just joining this game and you're asking yourself, why are these two knuckleheads so excited about a five-point game? <laughs> and this was a 33-point lead for Wichita State late in the first half. And whatever Scott Drew told his team at halftime, they have absolutely turned it right around. Inbound Stevenson in tight and his jump hook nestles in. Big shot for Wichita State. Lead is seven. Crowd who's been quiet most of the second half comes to life. Turnover. Vital couldn't hold it. Haynes Jones blows by and scores. Well, turnovers so many times lead to easy opportunities. Samaj J. Haynes Jones gets it, recognizes Mason is backpedaling in transition. And what do you do? Attack a backpedaling defender. Opportunity for the three point play. Wasn't a great pass from Mason. And Haynes Jones adds three to what has been a terrific night 21 points, 10 rebounds, three assists. And now Baylor went from 5 to 10 down quickly. Vital in the lane, hands it off. Kegler lays it up and in. Quick two. That's the last time out that Baylor has. Not over yet in Wichita. 2.08 left. It's an eight point lead. Game reset 65 57. Wichita State on top. Baylor's out of timeouts. Eight fouls apiece. Arrow now goes to Baylor. And there's 2.08 left. That just begins to tell the story 
of what was at one point a commanding 33-point lead for Wichita State. A dominant performance by Baylor here in the second half. And now Dan Dickow, I guess the question is, do they have anything left in the tank after coming so far in so little time? Yeah, well, what they've done in the second half is they've been solid defensively, making Wichita State work for nearly everything, and they've almost given them nothing on the offensive glass. Wichita State, 11 offensive boards in the first half, only three here in the second. So if I'm Scott Drew, my message is this. Look, we just need a stop. We need a rebound. Push and transition, see if we can get an easy look. If not, let's keep attacking, whether it's with Clark on the block or in pick and rolls. Let's stay with it. We don't have to get into the foul game just yet. Full court pressure. Man-to-man -man pressure in the half court. Haynes Jones uses a screen. Stevenson and Jones. Pocket six. Jones in traffic, gets through, gives it up, lost it, stolen. It's vital, up the floor. Kegler going strong, and he's hammered. He'll get free throws. It stops the clock. 1.34 left, and Baylor can get within six. One of the few mistakes Haynes Jones, Jones has made tonight. Shot clock's winding down. You're amongst the trees. Get that ball up on the rim. Even if you don't make the shot, give your bigs an opportunity on the offensive glass. That time, tried to sneak a pass in in a tight window. Baylor gets a hand on it. Other way, Kegler at the line for two. 629 days between college basketball games for Kegler, a transfer from Mississippi State, redshirted last year. Still knocking a lot of rust off. Yeah, only his second game, as we mentioned. It's been a little bit of a struggle here tonight at times, but you can see that they try to run a lot of things through him. And when the chemistry's there, he's going to be an impact player for Baylor come Big 12 time. Two big free throws, minute 34 left. Remember, Baylor's out of timeouts. Full court pressure. James Jones, the freshman Stevenson up the floor. Dexter Dennis cut off. Greg Marshall furiously waving in front of his bench. Haynes Jones. Vital comes out to check him. Vital does a little bit of everything for Baylor. It's 6'5", 230. Haynes Jones cut off there. Clocks down to four. McDuffie out alone. Swing at Stevenson. Got it off in time and missed it. Rebound, Dennis. Fresh shot clock, Wichita State. Big time offensive rebound there. Stevenson, McDuffie goes hard, and he's fouled, and it counts. The Achilles heel for Baylor in the first half has came back down the stretch. Second chance opportunity leads to another chance. Now that has to be a block and not a violation of the circle because he was outside the circle but apparently vital the officials felt didn't get there in time and McDuffie has a chance for a three-point play and I hesitate to put it, to say to put it away from what we've seen <laughs> but now the lead is back to nine and Baylor needs points and they need them fast Mason drives kicks rotate for a three McClure takes it missed it vital rebound mason three and he missed it mcduffie's got the rebound and the shockers now with 30 seconds and the ball a nine point lead dennis is fouled and it looks like wichita state is going to escape escape is the correct word rich as good as they played that first 20 minutes they made it interesting with some questionable plays and a lot of got to hand it to Baylor as well they didn't give up they kept scratching and clawing made it interesting but Wichita State made enough winning plays down the stretch to put it away Dexter Dennis the freshman misses his first free throw 
Dennis has four points, six rebounds. Greg Marshall was in a full sweat during his pregame talk, which we had. <laughs> Remember, he told his team, especially the youngsters, you've not seen anything like this with this crowd. Mason gets it up the floor. Kegler's three is well short. Put back there by Clark. But under 20 seconds left. Loose ball. Vitals got it. Kicked around. Stevenson has it, and he's fouled. And the lead is eight. I don't. And he was right. And they've never seen anything like this. I mean, I don't think anyone's played a game where they've had a 33-point lead evaporate. And it's hard when you get up by 33 to take your foot off the gas. And I don't want to necessarily say that's exactly what Wichita State did because you got to give a lot of credit to Baylor. They didn't quit. They didn't give up. They stayed with it. But it's a learning curve and a learning process for young guys to learn how to play when you're up so big early in the game. Rod Brown is in. It feels like if there were two more minutes left in this game. <laughs> but this will be an important win for Wichita State. They've got Oklahoma next. They still have Southern Miss. They travel to a VCU. They open American play at Memphis on January 3rd. Here on CBS Sports Network. The Southern Miss game also on CBS Sports Network. Mason penetrates, kicks, Kegler's three. Missed it. And the rebound to Poor Bear Chandler. And Wichita State is going to go to four and three. And for the second straight year, they take down the Baylor Bears out of the Big 12. Isaiah Poor Bear Chandler line shooting two. And I'm sure Scott Drew not happy with the loss, but when they look at this game, they'll look at the second half, and that probably will be the focal point for Baylor. There's Wichita State schedule. That's not easy. That game in Oklahoma City against Oklahoma. Southern Miss, downtown Wichita. Baylor's got it. A couple weeks off before they travel to Arizona. Bucket good. And the final margin, amazingly, is going to be an eight-point Wichita State win after a commanding 33-point lead almost got away from them. Both teams, young, inexperienced, finding their way both coaches have lots of good things to take away from tonight, but unfortunately for Baylor, they, their comeback came just a little bit short. Greg Marshall, Wichita State, led by that man, Samaje Haynes-Jones from behind the arc, comes away with the win. 71-63 the final for Dan Dickow and our entire CBS Sports crew. I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Back to New York, Brent Stover, Swin Cash, John Rothstein, and a little Jameer Nelson. Our New York studio for Inside College Basketball. So long from Wichita.